I'm Julie Crossland from Hudson, New Hampshire, and today I'd like to review the new feature in Creative Studio 6 of transferring patterns to boundaries. After this review, I have a video on making a wine bag that uses these functions. You can continue on or just exit. See you in a minute. We're going to look at the um, boundaries, and we have a new one. You're used to standard and stretch, and there's also a squeeze. And stretch and squeeze sometimes are very similar or very different, and it depends on the pattern. Um, so let's look at these. We're used to the standard right now. So if you were to look at the primrose block, in a square, fill that. You're, that's normally what you're used to. If we're to put that in a circle, that's what it would look like. Stretch and squeeze look the same for this pattern. So, if you were to do the simple flower in the square, that is the squeeze, and that's what it would look like. The stretch looks the same. And that's what the... Um, squeeze would look like and the stretch in a rectangle looks very different those two patterns of stretch and the squeeze the other thing that looks very different is a letter let's put an R in a rectangle rectangular shapes seem to be very different standard um, I'll just do a control Z to get rid of it stretch you notice the baseline is on the left so it's coming in that way but look what happens when you do a squeeze it fills the space nicely and uh, the letter goes a different way. The other shapes that are affected, you would never think a triangle shape like this would be affected. So let's see what that looks like. Right now we have it on a squeeze. And let's look at it in a stretch very different. Sometimes they're very much the same, sometimes they're different. Let's look at that same pattern. The stretch and the squeeze are the same, but look how lovely that fills the triangle, fills this shape. So uh, think about that when you have these type of shapes to quilt. Let's look at what happens with a um, primrose block in a very different shape. Um, this is the stretch. And the pattern is kind of skewed in different places, but it's the same for the squeeze. not as almost identical so what you would have to do this is very similar in our bag pattern you would have to look at the nodes go in here to the pattern and boundaries you would need to just bring these quilting into the pattern 
Um, let's see, where are these nodes? Here's a node, and here's a node. I can bring, do the nodes or the pink? So play with it and you can get these in. You, you probably don't need to be watching me play. It's more fun if you do the playing. I'm still trying to figure out where the other blue one is. It's way up here. Sometimes they're way out of the way and it's better to have. So here we've brought all the, the um, patterns within the boundary. The other thing that's interesting, we'll go ahead and select all and delete those, is um, to take a cross pattern like this and either a squeeze or standard. They both go in the same, but I think this is just amazing the way that works. Okay. So that's a review of the different shapes and the patterns to boundaries. Uh, play with the squeeze and stretch when you have an irregular shape other than a square. And uh, see what you get. It's a lot of fun. Now what would happen if you have a circle pattern and a circle out boundary? If you were to use a squeeze or the same would happen with the stretch, you end up with a skewed pattern that's squared. If you were to use the standard, it fills in nicely. Let's get busy on our wine bag project now. You'll need some um, patterns and materials. The materials you'll need are is a half a yard each of your backing and top fabric. I use muslin for this. You'll need some batting scraps. You'll need a sewing machine, thread, pinking shears, and some coloring options if you wish. You'll need to load the these patterns in CS4, Primrose Block, Feather Wreath 2, Line of Loop 9, Geometric Oval and Square. And in case you don't know how to um, load these patterns, I'm going to show you that as well, briefly. On the Gamma website for Statler Stitcher, what you want to do is, is find your patterns that are available here. And you go into Training. And right here are Creative Studio training patterns for four. And you can save them. And you have the patterns that we're going to use here. Okay. The recording from the machine head and, and computer did not show up that well. So I've gone to the standalone and let's load some patterns from CS4. Primrose Brock. Feather Wreath 2. Line of Loop 9, and Geometric Oval, and Geometric Square. From the Geometric Square, we can go ahead and change that to the, the 12 and a half that we want. And just do repeat pattern. 
and we're going to load that twice. So there's two patterns on top of each other. If we select them all, then we can move it out of the way to do the next one. So now we're going to do a repeat pattern and the width is good but we will want this one and a half height. This is going to be the strap on our bag. So let's go ahead and put that in and again we'll do two and if we build them right on top of each other somehow that didn't get changed because I didn't change it globally but we'll change it from here and do one and a half okay so now these two on top of each other we'll grab them together and move them over the last thing we need is our oval and the oval needs to be four inches round so if we set it for four The freeze aspect is off now. We'll do four again. And we'll do another one on top. And again, I didn't change it. Just change it here. Freeze aspect is off. So now we have two on top of each other again. And we're just going to move that over to the side. We'll go ahead and quilt this out. And then we'll have two double lines, which sometimes even look like embroidery lines. We sewed around uh, the patterns twice on the machine and this didn't project well so we're going to do it on the standalone. We need to go ahead and fill the loops of nine and if you use a stretch it works really well. The circle will use the standard and put in the feather weave too. Uh, that has a, a quarter inch around it and I would like it to feel better. So we take the margin off and try it again. It feels much better. Now the primrose block, we have happy birthday that we've sewn in here and I'll go over that with you again but you'll have an irregular shape that you'll need to put in on the the block so you will go ahead and use whatever pattern you want and outline um, that and from the beginning if you saw that just use that instruction on how to place this in and how to go ahead and edit that. That's a boundary and so we'll go ahead and put the primrose in by using a squeezer stretch. We'll do the squeeze and as you can see 
It went in much better than it had before. You don't have to move the nose around. So you could go ahead and use it um, with the squeeze like that. Okay. We move on to the next step. Now let's look at importing a photo. And I did a photo of a Word document using very large lettering so that I can make a pattern out of the lettering. So we will do import image. And I have this document on my thumb drive under photo under happy birthday. And so now we can go ahead and use a drawing tool to make some continuing letters. I've tried this in the past and the problem was I'm going to turn down this sound. Um, we don't need to listen to that. Um, I tried this in the past and the problem was that you couldn't make changes. It wasn't that easy to change this. So I'm just doing uh, this curve. And if you notice, I'm making sure that I click at the points. OK. And what I would do is go over all of the top letters and then I would come back and do the bottom letters. But let's look at how easy this is now with the new nodes to make this a very usable pattern. If you can see the pink nodes and the blue nodes. The pink nodes are the stitching nodes that you can actually move into place. The blue nodes help with the angles and if you move those closer to the node they will straighten out. So that's why I didn't take too much time to get these exact because you can really manipulate this and get this exact. Once you're done with this, you can save it as a pattern and you can either save it, of course, as a CSQ or um, a DXF. So here the node did not, I did not do a pink node, which I should have, but we can manipulate this well enough. Look at how well these pink nodes manipulate. This side is way over here, but I can get a nice rounded edge. So play with these nodes and you'll be a designer of your own. You'll be able to design a lot of patterns. And for the lettering, it just turns out beautiful, as you see with the finished project. So these aren't even close, but you can manipulate them to where they're exact. The pink are the actual stitches you're moving. The blue ones are the angle. See how that angle goes in? And the closer you get, this is the appropriate box here, the straighter it is. The other one's over here. Oops, I grabbed the pink one by mistake. Sometimes you have to pull them out of the way. But as you can see, less nodes are sometimes better than more. 
because you can see them. If you get too many clicks, then you won't have a chance to grab all of these. The other thing that you want to do is kind of overlap if you can when you start and end. Um, I thought I had done that, but evidently I hadn't. But look how I can manipulate this into line. Okay. Right click to get out. It's still selected. Um, then you can go ahead and export the pattern here to CSQ or DXO. To me, this is just so exciting part of the program. Importing and the nodes the way they are. Um, I'm sure someone else will explain to you also the um, different things you can do in the nodes, um, which are the same that you can do in other drawing programs, which is do a pause. Um, change your stitch per inch and you can do that even in existing patterns if you're having problem with the thread break at the same place in your patterns you can put um, your stitches per inch to go slower for that area and it will really um, help you frustration wise that was bothering me. I, you could just play with this all day. It's just too fun. Okay. So let's get to the important part now. Squeeze works for a pattern. So let's just go ahead and um, put in the happy birthday. Using repeat patterns. Um... a little small. We'll rotate it to make it kind of fun. Let's go ahead and rot oh, make it bigger first and then rotate it. So, um, that's ready to be quilted out. So, let's go ahead and quilt these patterns out. So, we've uh, finished sewing. And there's a little piece up in the corner here that I designed some balloons. And we're going to go ahead and quilt those out. I just use the little ovals and um, I lost my camera person here so this isn't quite as neat as, as it should be but anyway. We just use the little ovals and made some balloons and then I used the curved and sewable. I could have joined them a little better but this is a fun quick project. Um, I might want to pretty up. The other thing that I think I'd like to do with this is use some colored pencils to, to um, make it a little more colorful. And you could use crayons, you can use paints, you can then heat set them if you like. Um, this probably isn't going to be used um, and washed like you would a quilt. But if you use permanent paints, then you could do that. So I'll go ahead and finish my painting and like I said I'm going to cut with pinking shears between a quarter of an inch and an 
a half an inch all the way around. I'm going to go ahead and sew the square to the base and then I'll do the side seams. And before I do uh, that though I will sew on the handle to make it easier to attach. And uh, then we'll be back. We finished our quilting and colored in the areas we wanted to with colored pencils. I haven't heat set it because you really don't need to. We put right sides together of the square and the circle and we've sewed around to within about an inch. We went ahead and placed the right side of the rectangle to the wrong side of the bag after we heat fairly close to the top of the bag. Then we sewed a rectangle and an X across both handles and sewed the side seams all the way down with the opening on the circle. Then we've gone around and finished the circle. You pink the top of the seam close to the bag and turn it right side out and select your favorite drink that you're going to include in your gift a nice sparkling cider or your favorite wine and you're ready to go so here's your bag sewn and finished Happy 25th birthday, Gamble.